Hey, Retcon Raider here, and welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. As today we get some much needed R&R. &R. A lot has happened the past couple of episodes, and it's, um, you know, a bit tough to wrap your head around all of it. So I figure we'll take some downtime, pass a day or two, and see if we can shake some other events loose, maybe. By my count, at this point, every companion has had their event fire, except for Ember and Soso. So I'd like to see if we can get those taken care of before the new DLC drops. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Worst case scenario, we'll hit the murky grotto, maybe knock out another island or two. Nanio, you never ask me questions about the Abyss. Every crusader brave enough to talk to me asks me what it's like there, but you never do. I don't mind either way, but why doesn't the Abyss interest you? My project is called the Encyclopedia Galerionica. The Abyss is not Galerion. That information is beyond the scope of my current research. Ah, uh, yes. Nenio. A woman of unbridled focus. And no immediately firing events, so let's check the table. Oh, let's uh, check in on everyone while we're here, too. Okay, nothing new from the peanut gallery. Hey, Reg. What's up, buddy? No new events here, either. But we've only got two days left on these. And apparently we can start building another bastion. Why did... Huh, yeah, okay, let, let's get that going. I'm not sure why I didn't notice that earlier. That'll help us top off our last couple of kingdom stats. And thus concludes Kalesa's tale. We barely knew ye. Also, another conscription's done, so recruitment's up for the next two weeks. A group of brave elven warriors from Kionin has arrived in Dresden to take their revenge on the demons for Kalesa's death. It was their dark intrigue that ruined her and pushed her into the embrace of the dark fate. But she still found the strength to fight against evil. One should not expect anything less from her comrades. Plus 50 marksmen. Fantastic. We'll go ahead and tag them in with Agaboya's crew real quick. Would be nice if we could bulk up our sorcerer unit a little. But that's mostly just RNG. Now let's get some new projects going. Obviously, we are not doing that one. Oof, a lot of these are just crafting projects. And from what I've looked at, most of them don't really give us anything that we could use. Though I would like to finish them all eventually. Alright, well, for leadership, let's do uh, Golem Creation. And uh, for Diplomacy, we'll go after the Branch of the Last Ash, but before we do that, I'd actually like to get a gander at the description on the ancient map of Sarkaris, which uh, I was saving for a reader episode, but that hasn't happened yet, and I'm fairly certain the map vanishes once we actually do this project. But first, I guess we're doing this. Commander, please forgive this sudden visit. Anevia sent a messenger asking for me to come immediately. There she is. Greetings, Commander, revered cleric. A muscular, black-skinned man wearing Hell Knight's armor is walking next to Anevia. Despite the difference in height, he is obviously nervous around the delicate woman, looking around and biting his lip. Allow me to introduce 
Hell Knight, Ambassador of the Order of the Nail, Trevor Vanek. The Knight salutes. Greetings on behalf of the Order. Forgive me, I can't stay. Duty calls. I have a pressing errand. From headquarters, yes. It's very urgent. Uh-huh. That, that does sound quite official. Regil, you have any thoughts on this? Sosiel is silent. His lips are pressed together. He doesn't move, not even to breathe, seemingly. The cleric is staring at the visitor. Because his full name is Sosiel Vanek, and his brother is named Trevor. So you're Trevor Vanek? That's right. I serve the cause of the Crusade. It must be true. We have to take our guest's word for it. He has no documents or insignia confirming his identity. What? What are you getting at? Nothing. Nothing at all. Anevia casts a glance at Sosiel. The priest's mouth is twisted and his fists are clenched. We're happy to welcome you to Dresden, Trevor Vanek. Enough! Sosio lunges at the guest, his face distorted with emotion, and you suspect the cleric is about to throw a punch, but his clenched fists remain lowered. Who are you? How dare you call yourself by that name, scoundrel? Who, me? I'm not a scoundrel. People are always bad-mouthing us. There's a saying, the credit won by a lie only lasts till the truth comes out. Trevor Vanek is a proud knight. I won't put up with slander. So-so, is this your brother, Trevor? Of course not. But, but how does he know that name? And why is he wearing the black armor? And where, why do these words... The cleric's voice drops to a whisper, and you don't hear the end of the phrase. So you are an imposter, then. Me? No, it's not true, I swear. Anevia, who is this? Whoops. A great question. I have no idea. My guys clocked him when he was trying to threaten a merchant with his so-called order and get a horse for free. Then he gave a familiar name. So I decided to organize a face-to-face -face for the long-lost brothers. You knew it wasn't Trevor right from the off. You saw Trevor when he served in Canabras. Of course. But I hope that meeting you would make him drop the pretense and crack. Oof. Okay, so chaotic to throw him out, but... I feel like we really owe it to Soso -So to investigate this. Honestly, I feel like they could have gotten a bit more granular with our options here, at least alignment-wise. There are plenty of chaotic reasons we could have kept him. Lock him up. We'll get him talking. One way or another. Anevia takes the imposter away. He follows her, unshackled. Sosiel watches them leave. His fists unclench. He drops his shoulders. What the... Where did he come from? And did you hear what he said about truth and lies? The priest frowns. The credit won by a lie only lasts till the truth comes out. This is what they say in Andoran. Trevor used to say it often. Of course, one proverb doesn't prove anything. But I feel like that imposter knows my brother. Oh, Shaylin, what's going on? Commander, please, we have to interrogate him. And there we go. So-so quest has begun. Next step is to question the imposter in the jail. We'll get to that momentarily. But first, before I forget it, let's get a gander at that ancient map. Where are you? There are you. Ancient map of Sarkaris. When Sarkaris was perishing, tormented by the demons, many of the tribes were forced to flee. Legend has it that the people of the Bloodwood tribe, pursued by the spawn of the Abyss, 
walked through the wilds for days. Soon their strength left them and fear filled their hearts. When cruel death seemed inevitable, the old shaman summoned his fellow tribesmen and commanded them to take each other by the hand and stand united side by side. He promised that he would protect them from pain and anguish and offer them the opportunity to witness the eradication of the demon scourge to pay the bloody debt of revenge. The shaman performed a mysterious ritual, and all who had gathered became one, transforming into a giant ash tree that propped up the sky. The demons following the Sarkorian's trail did not find a living soul and howled in dismay. They burned down the forest and uprooted the trees before turning their ire on the ash, but the tree was too tall and mighty for them to fell. When the creatures of the abyss left with nothing, a boy, the only member of the Bloodwood tribe who, for some reason, had been untouched by the shaman's magic, jumped down from the tree and took his leave. He survived to pass on the legend of the last ash to future generations. Every ten years his descendants would make their way into the world wound, to the roots of the great tree, and honor the memory of his fellow tribesmen. A map showing the path to this secret site had been passed down in their family for generations. All who came to the last ash heard the same whisper drifting through the leaves. The last branch will be the witness of the end of demonic rule. Alas, as years went by, their belief in these words grew weaker, and the tree, wounded by the demons, slowly began to die. It is said to have turned into a huge stump with only one branch left. And if the tree dies before the world wound is defeated, the power of demons will never leave these lands. Are we sure we want to collect this thing then? I mean, unless we're planning on preserving it somehow. That said, uh, I feel like a bunch of people getting turned into a single tree is kind of a nightmare scenario. That's like Don Cheadle, Captain Planet, nightmare fuel. So maybe it is best if we just finish these poor saps off. I mean, we're going for it either way, so we'll see what happens. Alright, let's hit the bars. Chat up our new arrival. You've never seen Socio like this. The usually calm, friendly cleric of the Goddess of Beauty is furious. He is shaking the imposter, holding him by the collar with both hands. Who are you? What do you know about my brother? Speak! Speak, you scum! A brother, huh? The imposter cringes. Yeah, you do look like him. Come on, holy man, give me a dozen lashes. The blood drains from Sociel's face. His fingers unclench, and he recoils away from the bars. So so, buddy, you uh you okay over there? The priest shakes his head. It's like a bad dream or an evil fake joke. Please help me make sense of this before I lose my mind. Yep, yeah, I'm on it. So, my new friend, who are you really? The name's Graham. Abadar knows my last name. He's got it all written down. But it's above our rank to know our lineage. The man's lip curls in disdain. I take it you're not a Hell Knight either? Me? Nah. I just served them. Well, used to. I was a soldier in the Order of the Nail. Exterpreter's chapter, damn them all. Then I ran away from them. I wasn't cut out to serve like that. I wasn't a knight, not even a squire, just infantry. I got sick of getting my back whipped, so I had an idea. I hid the armor at night, and when I got the chance, I just ran. Tell me about the uh, exterpreters. What's their deal? What's there to talk about? 
They're scum, just like the rest of the black-clad brutes. What was our captain thinking when he got us hired by them? Maybe he hoped they'd knight him, or maybe he just wanted money. They have deep pockets. The Order of the Nail, Exterpreter's Chapter. They mostly hunt monsters. You know, dragons, other beasts. Study them, stuff them. They didn't tell me what they were doing in the world wound. Maybe they decided to hunt some distorted beast who grew tentacles and horns because of the demonic scourge. They, uh, you know, turned into freaks. They do pay well, but they make you work for every coin. If you do anything they don't like, they beat you with a stick or a whip. They don't pity people at all, even their own, not to mention us. In the year I served them, the unit shrank by half. So I ran away. I wanted to live too much. Okay, understandable. But why pretend to be Trevor Vanek? I was his valet for a year. Polished his black armor, tightened his straps. I was a drudge, all in all. He's evil, that Trevor. A devil of a man. He had me punished so many times. A whip for every slip is what he'd always say. A whip for every slip. You're lying. You're lying, scum. I'll show you. Yeah, you're his brother, all right. He even used to bare his teeth like you do. You scum, he'd say. If your ears don't work, let's see if your back gets the message. That... that's not true. Biting his lip, Sociel takes a step back. It can't be. Where were you headed when Anevia caught you? Wouldn't you like to know? Yes, yes I would. I thought I'd go to Mendev, sell the armor, and use the money to keep going. Didn't matter where. Maybe to the River Kingdoms, maybe to Verizia. I don't know. Just as long as it's away from demons and demon fighters. And where is Trevor now? With the other Knights of the Pike. I hope they whipped him good for losing his armor. What, Cleric? Haven't seen your brother for a long time? Give me the map. I'll show you where their camp was when I escaped. They probably haven't gone far. Sociel turns to you. His teeth are clenched, his hands shaking. I don't want to believe that Trevor became a Hell Knight. Please, we need to go there and find out for ourselves. Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's do it. I'm sure this guy will keep till we get back. Sure, go on. Good luck getting there. Well, joke's on you, Graham. I've got a teleporter. And nothing else keeping us in town right now, so we'll head right out. Adventure awaits! Oh, I, uh, I already leveled up so-so off-screen. That's actually why we rested, so I could refill his spell slots. And since so-so is a cleric, we'll have Darren sit this one out. Sorry, D-Rock. But it's fine. He can spend the time bonding with Helpful. And we're off. Hang tight, D. See you soon. All right, so where are we headed? Nope, that's a puzzle. There we go. Exterpreter's camp. And how convenient, it's just south of our teleporter. There's our warm-up. Malfeshni. Oh shoot, I brought Sela instead of Regil. Whoops.
That's fine. I'll get that sorted. Not, of course, that I really mind Sela's company. It's more just that I'm curious to see what Regil will have to say about his fellow Hell Knights. Fashion down. Wow, and that was it. Huh. That was an easy 360 XP. Ooh. <laughs> so so's taskbar is a nightmare. I'm gonna have to get that fixed up too. Demon army approaching. From right here. We'll keep that in mind. Exterpiters Camp. The Hell Knights from the Exterpiters chapter arrived to the World Wound to hunt and not to battle. These warriors were not interested in the demon armies. Instead, they were after the bizarre monsters born of this corrupted land. You know what fate awaited these knights in the end. But they were last seen in this inconspicuous hollow. Well, that is slightly foreboding. Let's check it out. Okay, let's hit the pause button real quick. I'll get buffs up, get So-So's bar sorted. And I guess I'll grab Regil real quick, too. Might as well. We'll be right back. And we're back. And as you can see, we have swapped out our Sela for one Regil. And our Risk for one Zorm. With the teleporter right around the corner, it was fairly trivial to get him swapped back in. And then aside from that, we've also applied a modest assortment of buffs. Maybe slightly immodest, but better safe than sorry, I suppose. That's it. Let's uh, give this place a gander. Judging by the burrow's form, it was dug by an incredibly huge purple worm. Oh, good. I'm sure that has nothing to do with this pile of corpses over here. They're all dead. Wait, what's that sound? Do you hear that sound? And there it is. Gluttonous Maw. 500 plus hit points, 51 AC. Oh boy. Well, um okay. Sure. Yeah, let's uh, let's do this then. Just another day in the world, wound. Distractions on deck. Hey, that's not a bad start. I hate harping on these guys. They look cool, but at this stage they are they are often hopelessly outclassed. There's our opening. Move in. Retreat is not an option. Well, that's slightly discouraging. Uh, 
Hey, there we go. Okay. Looks like Ember is going to be our heavy hitter this time. Oh, shoot. We've got traps. We'll have to be careful not to move around too much. That's fine. Just keep him distracted. Oof. There goes one. Kneel before me. All right, guys, come on. Half down. Nice. Oh, yeah. Trap number two. Gotcha. Be gone, fiend. Thank goodness. Missed Vex and tagged an image. <laughs> and down it goes. The monster is dead. Wiping the sweat from his face, Socio looks over the battlefield. It's the extirpators. This enemy must have been more than they could manage. The cleric folds his hands in a short funeral prayer. This is what happens when you lose your vigilance. They could have killed that beast had they not let it catch them off guard. It's embarrassing to see. Your fellow warriors are dead. Sociel speaks through his teeth, slowly, barely controlling himself. Do you really not have any other words for them except criticism and mockery? This is not mockery. There is nothing funny about a foolish, pointless death. And reading the last rites for them is not my job, priest. But yours. Oh, ouch. Regil, I'm going to need you to rein back that friendly fire, buddy. So-so, do you uh, see Trevor? No, he's not... I, I don't see him among these people. The relief is palpable in the young cleric's voice. Do you see anything else? Anything that might be useful? They died not long ago. Judging by the wounds, they were killed by the same beast we just dispatched. Right. You think Graham might have sent us here, hoping we'd share the same fate? Yes. Looks like it. Let's return to Dresden, and... Socio clenches his fist. Oh, Shaylin. Help me endure this. This entire story, you know, I don't recognize myself. I serve the goddess of love, but the Hell Knights, I hate them. I really do. It's sickening, but I don't know how to get rid of this feeling. I mean, I know they're not the easiest guys to get along with, but why do you hate them so much? The fact that we even tolerate them is a disgrace to the entire crusade movement cruel tormentors who are indifferent to the suffering of others, or who perhaps even enjoy it. What are they doing on our side? Why do we let them justify all these atrocities by participating in the Crusades? Perhaps it's because your side wants to win battles, at least some of the time. Socio presses his lips, vexed. Yes, and that is an even bigger disgrace. Aren't the forces of good inherently strong enough to win? 
Can evil really only be overcome by making a deal with another evil? Don't bring your metaphysics into this. Stop blaming your own incompetence on cosmic forces. The side of good isn't weak. It's you. Ooh. Reg, buddy. Not that he's wrong, but, you know, still. Well, what, what does your faith say about this, Soso? It's a temptation, and I must overcome it. Their cruelty stirs indignation in me. I'd like to believe it's righteous. But they also call their spite righteous anger. I shouldn't be like them. I shouldn't answer evil with evil. But goddess, it is so hard. I often notice the wise often think their way into traps that a simple man wouldn't even dream of. You don't like that we are strong, but you don't train to become stronger than us. Because for you, it would mean becoming like us. What can I say to that? Stay weak. All right, Rich. I think that's enough. It was fun the first time or two, but now you're just eviscerating a dead horse. So, so you just really haven't been yourself lately. What's up? The things he said about my brother. I admit I want to grab him by the throat and squeeze so hard his spine cracks. It is a dirty, unworthy desire, but I can't get rid of it. And worse, I think the reason I'm so angry is because I'm afraid he's telling the truth. Well, let's go pay Graham another visit. We'll make him crack. I'm sure he'll have some more for us. Sociel nods without saying a word. First things first, let's get these traps knocked out. So then we can indulge in some battlefield scavenging. Fine. I'm here. Where else would I be? There we go. Bodies torn to pieces. Steel armor crumpled like paper. Cold iron masterwork. Okay, here we go. Living flame. Whenever the wearer of this cloak channels energy to harm undead, for the next two rounds they become surrounded with a fire shield. That deals fire damage to the attackers for each successful melee attack against the wearer. Well, that is interesting, but so very specific as to be borderline useless. We barely run into undead as it is. Aside from the occasional Bodak or Skeleton Warrior, I don't think we've seen anything anytime recently. Not to mention, of course, you wouldn't want to have your primary healers on the front line where they're getting hit by undead anyway. Bye, guys. Thanks for the assist. Okay, that's not terrible. A fair chunk of vendor trash, plus the XP from taking out Gluttonous Maw. And whatever we've got up there. Oh. Ravenous Greater Shadow. Well, they showed me. Immediately ran into Undead, which I'm sure is intentional. The scrolls are nice. And the dagger is another fair chunk of vendor trash. Nice. Okay. Let's take this guy out. Yeah. Ravenous Greater Shadow. Yeah, we ran into a couple of these guys back at um, Palora's Fall, I think. Only this time we don't have Death Wards up. This 
strength hit on Kaz. And we're clear. Let's get Kaz patched. Nice. Thanks, Sosa. -so. giant crack in the diseased, parched land. Deep down are huge, branching burrows. That's actually kind of pretty. And mildly terrifying. Okay, moving on. We're coming up on time, but we should have enough left for Graham. We also have this army. We might need to have Agaboya intercept. I'm not sure Pilkwell's pikers can handle that. Oop, Spellbar disappeared. There it is. Minor UI glitch, no big deal. Ellie, baby, please give me some space here. I've got cats taking up like 90% of the desk space right now. Well, did you talk to the Exterpiters? The Exterpiters. They're all dead. That's a shame. I think I'm welling up. Tell me, Graham, were you maybe hoping we might share their fate? Accusations again. You can say whatever you like, but where's the proof? You can't scare me. You sure about that? Listen, do you understand the situation you've gotten yourself into? You'd be wise not to antagonize us. You should help us, and hope that after everything you've done, we still have a little mercy for you. Ha! Mercy? I'd be a fool to believe that lie. I know how kind you and your brother are. My whole back is covered with scars because of his mercy. That's not true. Sosiel muttered silently. It can't be true. Tell us what really happened, Graham. Or what? Or don't. See what happens. The imposter guffaws. Ha <laughs> True enough. Commander, you crack me up. All right, I got nothing else to do. Your bars are strong, locks are good. You got me. I'll hope for your... Hmm. <laughs> the imposter casts a vicious look at Sosiel. Your mercy. Well, listen, this time I'll tell you how it was. I was a soldier fighting for the Exterpiters. That wasn't a lie. I was valet to that scumbag, Trevor. He used to work me hard. But that was a long time ago. Before the demons took him took him. How? Where? How could you even say such a thing? Sosiel's voice is choked with grief and rage. The imposter enjoys the look on Sosiel's face. 
Keep listening. Don't interrupt me. We were hunting a chimera back then. It's an easy job for the extirpators, even with all the demonic freakishness the wound gives a chimera. We were driving it toward your boy Trevor. He was preparing to attack. And then a demon appears. A huge one, scary in a black mask. Bam! Rips one knight to pieces. Bam! There goes another one. And then the demon looks at Trevor and says, This one is good. I'll take him. And he picked him up like he weighed nothing and vanished. Well, what could we do? That demon was chopping up knights left, right, and center. What could we do? We turned and ran. Then the rest of our guys caught up to us. They executed a few of us on the spot as a warning and made the others slaves. Live bait for the monsters. Slaves don't live long. Only three of us survived out of the whole unit. And no one has seen Trevor since. Ellie, no. What was Trevor like, really? A real devil. Didn't go easy on anyone. Beat us good. The knights respected him, and us ordinary infantry were afraid to show our faces to him. Excuse me, Ellie. And you have no idea where he ended up? Are you deaf? I told you, no one knows. A demon dragged him off. A demon in a black mask. As to the where and why, you'll have to ask the demons. There was a another Hell Knight named Marenta. She ended up with Trevor Shield. Do you have any idea how that happened? Marenta? She and Trevor were sleeping together. When they dragged Trevor off, he dropped his shield, so she picked it up. Like, to remember him. I'm telling you, those two deserved each other. When Trevor was gone, that crazy bitch wanted all of us to be executed. The whole unit. The Paralictor refused to waste people. He said we'd be useful as slaves. She made a scene and then transferred to another order. Good riddance. And did you know what happened to the extirpators? You saw what happened to them. They died. I don't care. I'm not going to cry about them. They killed a lot of beasts, but there's always someone stronger. That demon wiped them out. Only the ones who ran survived. You mentioned three survivors in your unit. Where'd the other two get off to? I think they were going to go to Canabras. They wanted to pretend to be refugees and then wing it. You want to catch them too? They're probably somewhere near the creepy church where the undead used to be. I heard they planned to build a shelter there to stay away from the local commander. So-so? You satisfied? Yes. Sociel's voice sounds hollow, and he looks totally lost. I... I am. So it's true. My brother betrayed everything we believed in. Well, hold on a second now. So far, we've only got one side of this story, and it's from this guy. We should at least see what the other survivors have to say. What's the point in running away from the truth? The others will only confirm his words. Sociel looks down, but then hesitantly looks up at you. Although, it probably wouldn't hurt. Excuse me, I need some fresh air. Ah, uh, poor Soso. -so. How about you, Graham? You got anything else for me? The imposter is staring at the cracks in the ceiling. You again. What else do you need? Uh, nothing much, I suppose. You just sit tight, Graham. I'll decide what to do with you a little later. All right. At least I'll get fed here. That you will. He actually doesn't seem that bad, relatively speaking. I mean, obviously he's an asshole, but... He did what he had to do to survive. He's somewhat justifiably bitter about the things that happened to him. You know, Hell Knights will do that to you. As long as we don't find out that he, like, attacked or killed anyone, we'll probably let him go. 
That said, we're just hitting time, so I feel like this is a good place to call it. We'll hit the pause button for now, we'll take care of the usual between-episode bookkeeping, and we will pick up here next time as we finish up the Soso quest and uh, hopefully get another one going. I'm really enjoying these companion quests, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Ember. See you then! Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Eloise, Dracoth, the Eerie V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleib, James Tremier, Kazorm, Mark Diemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the Patreon, the PayPal, the Nexus GG page, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. That information is beyond the scope of my current research. <laughs>